Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at marginal analysis. Economists say most decisions are made at the margin and we're going to find out how that works today. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. So before we can understand how decisions are made at the margin using marginal analysis, we need to know what marginal means. Marginal means change in the total. Here we have a table with different quantities and different total amounts. This could be marginal cost, marginal benefit, marginal utility, marginal revenue, marginal revenue product, marginal social benefit, or any other terms you're likely to see at some point within this class. But marginal means change in the total. So if we go from a quantity of zero to a quantity of one, the total goes from zero to five. The change in the total is five. That's the marginal amount. The second unit, the total goes from five to 15. That's a marginal amount of 10. From two to three, we go from 15 to 30. That's a marginal amount of 15. From three to four, we have a marginal amount of 20. And from four to five, we have a marginal amount of 30. So that marginal column there is the change in the total for each new unit of quantity. The formula for marginal officially is change in the total divided by change in the quantity. But on your AP microeconomics exam, change in the quantity is almost always going to be one. So you just need to look at the change in the total for that next unit. And remember, marginal is the change in the total. So if we graph it out and we see total increasing at a decreasing rate, that means that marginal is going to be positive but decreasing because that total is increasing but at a decreasing rate. If we see total increasing at an increasing rate, that means marginal is increasing. If we see total increasing at an increasing rate, that means marginal is positive and increasing. If we see total increasing at a constant rate, that means marginal is positive and constant. And if the total is decreasing, that means marginal is negative. You will see total and marginal graphs within this course often moving forward. And the relationship between the two should be apparent. Now let's say you have an economics exam tomorrow and you need to study for it. Now this table here shows all the total benefit the different grades you could earn with different amounts of studying. If you study no hours, you're going to have a total benefit of a 30% on that exam. And if you study for four hours, you're going to get 100% on the exam. Now, some people would look at those numbers and think that a rational student would automatically study for four hours. But decisions don't just take benefits into account, they take costs as well. But before we get to the cost, let's look at the marginal benefit because marginal benefit versus marginal cost is where the decision of how much to study is actually going to be made. Marginal always means change in the total. And in this case, we're talking about marginal benefit that's the change in the total benefit for one more unit of studying. So if this student goes from studying zero hours with a 30% grade up to one hour with a 65%, that is a marginal benefit of 35%. It's the change in the total benefit of studying for one hour. Studying a second hour, the grade goes from 65% up to 85%. That's a marginal benefit of 20%. That third hour has a marginal benefit of 10%. The fourth hour has a marginal benefit of 5%. And that last hour, you actually have a negative 5% benefit. And that's because the total benefit actually decreases as a result of overstudying. Now, since this is economics and we usually use dollars and cents in this class, we're going to make an assumption that 1% on your exam is worth $1 to you. So we're going to change the percentages to dollars so it will look more like the questions you are likely to see on your exams. You could see a graph for marginal benefit. Over on the y-axis, we're going to have benefit on the x-axis, we're going to have the quantity, that's the units of studying in this case, and we will have a downward sloping marginal benefit curve that eventually breaks that x-axis and becomes negative. Marginal benefit curves will slope downward to the right because as you do more of something, the marginal benefit decreases with each additional unit. Of course, you can't just focus on marginal benefit when it comes to making a decision. You have to look at marginal cost as well. Here we have the costs associated with units of studying. We've converted these costs into dollars. It's the value associated with whatever you would have used your time for. And of course, the value of your time increases the less of it you have available 
for leisure. So perhaps that first hour of studying, you're just going to lose out on a TV show that you don't really care that much about. But if you study more, you're going to have to give up your video game play, which you value more than watching television. And if you keep studying more than that, you're going to have to give up some time hanging out with your best friend. And of course, many students, if they keep on studying, eventually you're going to lose out on precious sleep time and you're going to be tired the next day as a result. And so, of course, the total cost of studying increases the more you study, but it's the marginal cost of each additional unit, in this case, hours of studying, that need to be considered when you make your decision. So that first hour of studying has a marginal cost of $6 because we go from $0 up to 6 the second unit of studying has a marginal cost of $7. The third is $9. The fourth is $12. And that fifth unit of studying costs $15. And these dollars are, of course, the value of what you would have been doing with your time had you not been studying. If we put marginal cost on a graph, as we saw in those numbers, this time we're going to have cost on that y-axis, we can see that marginal cost curves will generally slope upward. Each additional hour of studying is more costly than the previous hour of studying. So when it comes to actually deciding how much this student should study, we're going to need to find the benefit maximizing number of hours. And benefit maximizing behavior is found where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. It's the formula I've got on my hat because benefit maximizing behavior is what we should all be doing. What this means is that you will always act as long as the marginal benefit is greater than or equal to the marginal cost of that action. And you do not act if the marginal benefit is less than the marginal cost. If we take a look at the marginal benefit and marginal cost for the units of studying, the marginal benefit is never equal to the marginal cost. So how many hours should this student study? Well, we're going to keep on studying as long as the marginal benefit of studying is greater than the marginal cost of studying. That first hour of studying has a whopping marginal benefit of $35, but a small marginal cost of just $6. So a rational person would definitely study that first hour because there's a marginal net benefit of $29. That's the marginal benefit minus the marginal cost. That second hour of studying has a marginal benefit of $20 and a marginal cost of seven. A rational student would definitely study that hour because the marginal cost is less than the marginal benefit. That third unit of studying has a marginal benefit of $10 and a marginal cost of nine. So we will still study that hour as well because it has a marginal net benefit of $1, which means it increases your total net benefit. Now that fourth hour of studying has a marginal benefit of just $5 and a marginal cost of $12. This student will have a negative net marginal benefit of $7 if they study that fourth hour. It will actually decrease their total net benefit for studying. And so the best number of hours to study for this student based on these numbers is three hours. And while they could study longer, and get a better grade on that exam, since decisions are made at the margin and the marginal cost of the higher grade would be greater than the marginal benefit of the higher grade, a rational student would not study that fourth hour. And this student will end up with a 95% on the exam. Now, if these tables were on an exam and you had to identify the benefit maximizing number of hours this student should study, you would say three because $10 is greater than $9 and $5 is less than $12. So don't forget that on the exams when you are doing marginal analysis, the explain point requires that you say why you are choosing the unit you are choosing and why you are not choosing the follow-up unit. If we take a look on the graph where we have marginal benefit and marginal cost graphed together, the benefit maximizing quantity is found where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. That's where the two curves intersect. Q1 is what we've got. Next, we're going to talk about diminishing marginal utility. Now, the definition of utility is the satisfaction that is gained by consumers when they consume a good or service. So essentially, utility is the benefit that consumers get when they purchase a product. Now, the law of diminishing marginal utility tells us that the additional satisfaction gained from consuming more units of a good decrease with each additional unit. So for example, if you head to your local pizzeria, your first slice of pizza is going to be worth a lot to you because it's absolutely delicious and you are very hungry. The second slice won't be worth quite as much as that first slice, but it will still be pretty good. The third slice is just okay. The fourth slice is all right. And the fifth slice is pretty awful. So the additional benefit you get with each new slice of pizza decreases with each additional slice. And this decreasing marginal benefit, or marginal utility is what we call it for consumers, decreases so often we call it the law of diminishing marginal utility. 
So if we graph a marginal utility curve, it looks just like a marginal benefit curve because marginal benefit for a consumer is called marginal utility. If we zoom out a little bit and add a total utility curve, we see that as long as marginal utility is decreasing but positive, total utility is going to increase at a decreasing rate. When marginal utility breaks the x-axis and turns negative, total utility will now begin to decrease. So where marginal utility is at zero, that's where total utility is maximized. Now, of course, consumers have lots of different things they could spend their money on, and they are going to use marginal analysis to determine where they should spend their money. And marginal utility is the key to this concept. A consumer should spread out their spending until this formula is true. The marginal utility of good A divided by the price of good A will equal the marginal utility for good B divided by the price of good B. And when that formula is true, a consumer has maximized their total utility possible given their current level of spending. So for simplicity's sake, let's say a consumer purchases just two things with their money, sandwiches and sodas. The marginal utility of the last soda this consumer bought was 30 utils, or that's units of utility. And the price of that soda was $2. The marginal utility for the last sandwich consumed was 100 utils, and the price of the last sandwich was $5. Now, as you can see, based on the numbers, this consumer preferred a sandwich to a soda. But utility maximizing combinations of sodas and sandwiches don't just take into account the marginal utility. They also need to look at the price. So we're going to divide the marginal utility by the price of the product. So for soda, the marginal utility is 15 utils per dollar. And the marginal utility for the last sandwich is 20 marginal utils per dollar. And now that we know the marginal utility per dollar spent for these two goods, we can actually advise this consumer to have more sandwiches and fewer sodas because the marginal benefit per dollar spent is greater for the sandwiches and it's lower for the sodas. So this consumer's total utility will actually increase if they buy more sandwiches and fewer sodas. And if you see questions about this on the AP exam, just take the margin utility, divide it by the price for both goods in question, and you want more of the one with the higher marginal utils per dollar and less of the one with the lower utils per dollar. And that's because more utils per dollar is a better value and you want a lot out of your money. You could see a question with more than just two products and a budget constraint. Let's say a consumer has just $6 and they are going to decide how many apples, bananas, and oranges they're going to purchase. If apples cost a dollar, bananas cost 50 cents, and oranges cost $2, how should they spend their money? Well, of course, we need to know the marginal utility for each of these goods. As you can see, based on these numbers, the marginal utility for oranges is higher across the board for this consumer. That means they prefer oranges, but we need to divide by the price of that fruit in order to determine where they should spend their money. So we're going to take the marginal utility and divide it by the price to see the marginal utils per dollar for each unit of fruit. And when we're trying to decide how many of each piece of fruit this consumer should purchase, we're just going to spend the money one unit at a time on the product with the highest marginal utility per dollar. The first unit of a banana is the highest marginal utility there. It's 60 utils per dollar spent. So we're going to buy that first unit of a banana. The consumer now has $5.50 left to spend and they're going to buy the next product with the highest marginal utils per dollar and that is another banana. 52 utils per dollar is the highest available for the next unit. This consumer has $5 left and they are now going to purchase their first apple with 50 marginal utils per dollar. They are now down to $4 and they are finally going to buy their favorite fruit which has 48 utils per dollar for that first unit. And now this consumer has just $2 left. They're going to purchase another orange because that is 42 utils per dollar spent. And there we have our utility maximizing combination for this consumer. They're going to buy one apple, two bananas, and two oranges. There is no other combination on that table that this consumer can afford that would give them a greater total utility. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about marginal analysis and consumer choice. If you're ready to practice this, head over to reviewecon.com and play the utility maximizing combinations game to make sure you fully understand this. If you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.